Hi everyone and welcome back to my take on it with your angelic karma. We are live. Those of you that want to join with me on the chat, you're most definitely welcome to do so. You know, um, the podcast last night most definitely brought up something very interesting when we got into that um, Lucifer's red tangle, the mystic red tangle. Um, Alistair Crawley came up and so I did some digging like that because I don't know much about him. Well, I didn't know, don't know anything about him, not, though I've heard the name. I didn't know anything about him because remember, as I stated, all the years I've been public, I don't go by the teachings of anybody else. I just go by what I'm picking up energetically like that, what I'm picking up. So we're going to take a look at it and we're going to look at the mystic rectangle and in Lucifer's rectangle. So I'm, I'm going to read this and then we're going to talk about Alistair Crowley and, his birth, Crowley and his birth chart and what I've seen. Now, I'm pretty sure a lot of astrologers that are also spiritual, they've studied him in depth like that. Now, remember, he is, he was an occultist, but I'll have to see what was going on there like that so we can make these distinctions and what his actual message was. Obviously, he had one, and I'm going to tell you all why I feel that he had one from first glance from looking at his astrology chart. Now, let's look at the fifth star algo. And it states, in the constellation Paris lies the fifth star Algo, which is known as the head of the beast. Algo has the most notorious and infamous. Now, first we're going to talk about Aquarius. Because whenever we talk about um, spiritually, um, Aquarius is the Antichrist, like that. Now, Aquarius and Unit, and it is looked at that way spiritually, energetically, because Aquarius um separates itself from its ruler Uranus like that. Um but Uranus and Saturn rulers work within unison. Okay. Both energetic powers. But Aquarius is an astrological sign just like um Pisces, just like Aries, just like Taurus, just like Virgo, just like Sagittarius, just like Leo, just like Scorpio, just like um Gemini, like that. But Aquarius is distinct. That's why the Aquarian age and, and but people that follow Aquarius, Aquarius has all that. Okay, that's different because it distinguishes itself away from its ruler. It made itself is like the alter ego of Aquarius, like that. And Aquarius is looked at as the um, Antichrist because Aquarius, with the New Age, it comes across as humanitarian, and it's a way that. And it can get people to follow it because genius energy and it can be none could be the wiser, like leading people under the guise of good humanitarian. And, you know, nobody's going to dig any deeper to see about that. They're just going to look at that part and think it's all good. That's why it did uh, with more that comes with uh, it's easier to get. It's easy to do like that because, you know, you come in on the guise of humanitarian shit. But in the background, it can be something else going on. That's why it's looked at the Antichrist. That's one Antichrist. That's one of the reasons like that. Um, it, it, it is one of the reasons. So, and then there are other spiritual reasons. It's, it's separation and distinguishing itself from its ruler Uranus like that. And acting in independence that way. And a lot of Aquarius followers like that, but it signifies also the Antichrist. And that would be good regarding Pisces because Pisces has the Christ consciousness like that. Now, so now, so when we talk about the head of the beast, let's see what this is about. Cause this could be about something a little bit more associated with that also, but quite different. Now, fit star algo in the constellation Paris lies in the fit star algo, which is known as the head of the beast. Algo has the most notorious and infamous reputa reputation of all the fit stars. Most people know the legend of Perseus, the Greek hero who slew the snake-headed Gordon Medusa in order to save his beloved Andromeda from her sacrificial death at the hands of the monstrous Kraken. The, Kra the Kraken was immediately dispatched and turned into stone by the sight of the decapitated head of Medusa. Algo is the brightest star in the head of the Gorgon and is one of the most powerful stars in the heavens. 
Astrologers agree that this is the most malefic of the fit stars and believe it to cause hangings, decapitations, and any of all foul and demonic deeds that plague, man, plague mankind. It was called Ra's al Ghul, meaning head of the demon by the Arabs who believe the star represents this particular demon to be the wife of the devil. The Chinese call al Ghul sees she, which means piled up course in a Talmudic law. The star represented Lilith, the first wife of Adam, who refused to be submissive to her husband and was subsequently turned into a demon of the wind. Igo represents the energy of the female demon, both ruthless and destructive and full of outrage. The energy is also intensely sexual. Now, that's the wife of, um, first wife of Adam, Lily, intensely sexual, um, rebelled against Adam, didn't want to submit like that. Like, is it was the rebellion, but it didn't want to submit. It's the it's the female rebellion. It's what it talked about. Not wanting to submit to Adam, not wanting to be at what I would feel. I didn't know about this story, but I would feel it would be okay with the intensely sexual parts. And I would have felt submission would have came naturally and not submitted to the world, but yes, submitted to Adam like that. If he was the husband, this is my question because I never read this, but here we go. If Agro connects with any planets in a natal chart, they will be infused with intensity and passion and the outlet of this energy can be either for used for good or ill. Albert Einstein had Agro culminating with his Jupiter at birth and he is partly remembered for his work concerning the unleashing of the power of the atom. While the work itself was not evil, the atomic bomb which annihilated Hiroshima was the destructive outcome. Okay, so they could be had this in their chart, but they can use it for good and evil. It's significant power that can be good used for good and evil. The mystic rectangle in itself is also regarding that. It, even though we hadn't gotten into that yet, it could be the, there's a tremendous power and it can be used for good or evil. So Albert Einstein, one of the world's geniuses, had this um this configuration in his chart but he used it for good he created the atom and but then it was later used for evil with the bomb with Hirosh and not with the annihilation of Hiroshima okay and that was a destructive outcome so president John F Kennedy had Mars culminating with Algo in his birth chart and he was assassinated by a gunshot to the head actress Jane Mansfield whose skull was crushed she was not decapitated in a car accident, allegedly the result of a satanic curse. Also had Algo active in her chart. On a lesser note, Algo can also represent losing one's head due to bad judgment, outrage, and anger. And we're going to tell you all what Algo the configuration is. Now let's look at Lucifer's rectangle. Now, in astrology, a configuration or geometric pattern known as the mystic rectangle can be a welcome sight in a natal chart since it basically provides balance, structure, and harmony between the four heavenly bodies that comprise it. So those of you that had a mystic rectangle, you're blessed. It is very positive and you have a very unique birth chart like that. It is a soft aspect pattern consisting of two pairs of opposites, oppositions sextiling each other. The mystic rectangle is either masculine, fire, and air. That's why, how I have mine. I have mine exactly my son. Uh, mine is Sagittarius, Libra, Aries, and Gemini. Because I have my son in Sagittarius. I have Uranus in Libra. My MC is in Aries. My son is in Gemini. That's my rectangle. Now, so is, um, let's continue to read. Okay, so it, it, the mystic rectangle is either masculine, fire and air, or feminine, earth and water. Finding the balance of the pattern takes awareness and conscious effort. Those who can successfully integrate the pattern find it a source of strength. That's the mystic rectangle. Now, another variation of the mystic rectangle is known as Lucifer's rectangle. Now, that's different. It is a special case rectangle consisting of cosmic entities 
in the signs of Taurus, Scorpio, Virgo, and Pisces only, it states. That would be Lucifer's rectangle. It's only, de it's only consisting of these cosmic entities. Taurus, Scorpio, Virgo, and Pisces only. And that's Lucifer's rectangle. It shows up in, up prominently in the founding chart of the Church of Satan and oddly enough in the natal chart of the infamous black magician Aleister Crowley who preferred to be called the beast. Now, okay, I didn't know that about him, but I'm going to tell, I'm going to read something. Now, okay, so even more interesting is the fact that in both charts, each rectangle is formed by planets, asteroids, and points in second, fourth, eighth, and tenth houses which encompass the occult and worldly standing. Okay, now. Okay, we're going to go back to that. But let's go to Scorpio. Because this what here, let's read this. Scorpio, the most malign sign. Scorpio is part, because remember, it's the four. Scorpio, Pisces, Taurus, and Virgo. That's Lucifer's rectangle. Scorpio is probably the most malign sign in the zodiac. The sign is associated with subconscious and forbidden aspects of life, including evil, death, and the occult. Scorpio is the eighth sign and rules the eighth house, which is one of the occult houses in astrology, along with the fourth and twelfth houses. The fourth house of Cancer is the occult house in astrology, and the twelfth house of Pisces is the occult house in astrology. I'm going to tell you why. Obviously, the eighth house would be a cult house um, like that. Those are the water houses. And, and the fourth house is the past, is the moon. I've always, since I first started this work public, I've always said the moon was evil. And people hated me for that, especially women. Because with Western astrology, they look at, well, no, because it's about feminine. It's about women, so it's supposed to be positive. Well, I'm more, I'm, I'm connected to, I'm different what I bring to the table energetically like that. I'm not all with what is red and being on women's side because they're women. I'm going by what I pick up energy, what the energies are telling me. The fourth house is associated with the moon. The moon is dark in astrology. The sun for me, and I say this all these years, is positive because the sun is prosperity, it's abundance, it's light, is it's expansion, it's good health, it's good well-being, it's the masculine principle. Now, and, and women take that as, would well, that mean the women are the men, women are me? Not, not, no, a lot of them are not like that. Now, so, so the fourth house is, is, is in a cult house. It could be for the negative because it is the moon and it is, is what's done in the darkness is the moon. It could be moon magic, dark magic was done in the darkness, hidden matters, um, it could be, is lunacy is the moon. It is, I'm so happy my moon is in Capricorn. My moon is the opposite. Like that. Okay. Is uh, of cancer of the fourth house. And, and Saturn is looked at as enemy to the moon. Like that. Because Saturn is about structure and balance and sober and grounded and discipline and manage emotions and manage feelings. And that doesn't mean that one does not feel the feelings. It means that one manages them as ways to taking action. Like that. So is so that's why the moon is a dark energy. Now the twelfth house is Pisces. P Pisces is portals. Is the, the is the subconscious? Is the twelfth house? Is all of the past lives in those portals being open like that? The twelfth house is all. Is everybody is the twelfth house? All of the astrological signs. The, the occult aspect is the, the, all the signs for the dark, the subconscious for the dark, but that the portals, the past lives walk. Now, the eighth house obviously is related to occult. Is the other water house? Is Scorpio? Is the subconscious the psychology of evil or what lies beneath the surface of our everybody? Because everybody has an astrological sign. Of everybody past, everybody's past lives, your actions, your doings, or your thoughts, your deep subconscious thoughts that only you think that you know about, like that. Scorpio, it rules that, like that. What's hidden? What you try to hide? What lies beneath the surface? Surface. This subconscious, your psychology, 
your actions, what you've done like that, your evil deeds, your evil thoughts, your hidden thoughts, your hidden um, desires, your hidden nature that you may think is hidden, but may not be. It won't be to a Scorpio. It holds all of that darkness like that. It knows all of that. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I started talking about a Scorpio energy that lives in the ethers that it work, but it works at the high vibration. That's the Phoenix like that. Now is, and this is the secret keeper. And it's the transformation. The Scorpio and the eight households, everything that is to be transformed regarding your reason for being like that. And I stated that a lot of people think that they're here and when they talk about healing, and it's because somebody did something to them. No, no, you've done it equal to them or worse than them. That's why you're here. That's why you shouldn't be focused on what other you need to heal because Jake did this to you like that. It's different when we're talking about past lives. It's about healing is always about what you've done like that. And you can take it as what has been done to you because that is a part of it also. You know, it depends on how old the soul is. So Scorpio knows all that. That's why it can see through people. It can read people's mind or people can feel that their mind is red. It can pick up on your dark energy. It can pick up on your dark nature without trying to. You're an open book, especially when you're a closed book like that. Now, so those are the three houses associated with a cup, a cup obviously. Because those are water houses associated with the spirit realm, with what can't, be, with what um, can't be picked up on with the mind, like that, with what can't be defined by the logical mind, with it, which goes above and beyond the logical mind, like that. You know, is those types of things. So is. Scorpio is often considered the strongest sign of the zodiac emotionally and often physically. They are the strong. Scorpio is the strongest sign of the zodiac. In ancient times, it was depicted as the phoenix rising from ashes, eternal and indestructible. It's death and rebirth and transformation. It goes and comes back. It goes and trans. It goes and comes back. It goes and comes back. It goes and comes back. That's Scorpio like that. It is, um, that's the phoenix rising from the ashes. It can become ashes and it rises again and ashes and it rises again and it rises again. And it can sting itself so that it can have that transformation like that. So it's a very psychological, powerful sign. It's just not about emotion and feeling very powerful. It's psychological sign. It's death, rebirth like that. It's, um... In ancient times, it was depicted as the phoenix rising from its ashes, eternal and indestructible. There is nothing too dark, forbidden, or dangerous to a Scorpio. It rules the night, Halloween, and all venomous animals, vampires, devils, demons, ghouls, zombies, and all bears of evil incarnate like the jinn. Like the jinn? J-I-N-N. Scorpio is also associated via, via its ruler, Pluto, with brimstones, catacombs, coffins, corpse, death rays, and places of death such as gulatins, gulatins, gallows, morgues, and of course the most obviously life or death. So with Scorpio, we're talking about death, physical death, and we're talking about symbolic transformational death, like that. According to Grace Williams, there is the unevolved, hellish, and demonic Scorpio. And I've been talking about that also. I talked about that the last couple of weeks, that you don't want to bullshit around. And a lot of people are like, Scorpio, that means that they're going to be mad and they're going to have emotions and feelings and they need to learn how to forgive then. And that's just a mo Not that. I've been telling you all the energy can sit out and target and leave you in your coffin. I've been saying that for the last couple of weeks. There is a energy. It knows who did it. Even if the Scorpio doesn't know who did it. It knows the hidden intentions. Even if the Scorpio doesn't know the hidden intentions. I have Mars, Mercury, Venus, and Scorpio, and Pluto set out and send it. The Scorpio human could have forgotten or not know where the energies come from. But the, because the Scorpio, the human has the intense emotions and feelings. It fused the energy of the entity and the entities will let loose and go do the vengeance. 
go balance the scales. And it is intense. And the Scorpio hands are clean. Is the energies can send out the death ray. Can do whatever. The energy. And, and the energy is intense. This Scorpio is quintessentially evil in the strictest definition of the word. This Scorpio is quintessentially evil in the strictest definition of the word. They can be classified as sociopaths. They refuse to adhere to the concept of right and wrong. And remember a couple of weeks ago I stated that the Scorpio human can be a law abiding a Scorpio, but the entities might, might not be law abiding. It depends on what has been done to the Scorpio hen, um, human and these energies. I state that Scorpios are connected to the cult of connected darker energy at the subconscious level where they are, whether they're aware of it or not. Some of them could be aware. Some of them could not be aware. And, and that, um, the Scorpio could be law abiding. It doesn't believe in revenge or vengeance, but the energies that it's connected to could, could want to settle the score. And they act as independent entities because they are independent entities. Like that. And it depends on, cause Scorpio is a very strong side. It could take a lot psychologically and mentally. It depends on how much it took. Sometimes the, the entities uh, don't, don't feel that they can feel that they want to get the justice. That they want to settle the score. That's how it works at the subconscious level. Many metaphysicists and new age spiritualists would call these types of Scorpios dark entities. Exactly. That's what they are. That's what I was talking about a couple of weeks ago. Dark entities are people who have no moral consciousness regarding right and wrong. And since I started doing this work, I will always talk about morals or right and wrong and Saturn and the laws of karma and justice. People hated it in the new age community. Could they hate it here? Could the new age community, they associate that part of it with Aquarius. Aquarius is the rebel. It rebelled like that. It, it rebelled against authority, even in terms of authority, because it feels that it's genius energy and it knows best. And it created the, um, being the, what do you call it? The humanitarian. And everybody was like, well, you must be good then, like that. And it could fool society. That's why they call it the Antichrist, because it could get followers. And that way you have people that are followers of Aquarius. It could be, um, they, and they may not. Because they will be highly intellectual and genius. They may feel that they have a God consciousness, this is what we, which we all do, but with a God consciousness that doesn't have a God over there like that. And they can feel that there is no right or wrong or that you shouldn't have to listen to traditional rules and values, even though I'm not religious, but still is Saturn and the Lord of Karma and being just and fair like that. That's been mine since I started. Because that's the energies that I'm, I've been connected to since I've, been, I've started. So, and with Scorpio, it could be, um, these people don't have to have a lot of Scorpio in their chart. They can have a little bit of Scorpio in their chart. They can have a lot of whatever else in their chart. Um, they can have that Taurus, whatever. But it, it, even without the Aquarius part and you had the Scorpio dark energy, I was talking about this with, the, with that Scorpionic energy. Uh, you, you, well, you need to apologize to people because you know you've done them wrong and you think it's hidden. It's not so hidden. Is not so hidden. And it's not about the Scorpio or the Scorpio other people doing something to you specifically and overtly and conscious. It's just the energies that they're naturally connected to that could do it. Like that is that could do their bidding or, and, and, or just they're independent entities and they could be doing their own bidding, but it will be done on behalf of the Scorpio, but the Scorpio cannot have anything to do with what is being done. That's the type of darker entities I was talking about last week. That's why I said you don't want to bullshit around with these types of entities like that. You just don't want to do it. You just don't want to do that like that. So you just don't want to do that. You can think it's just about emotion, feelings and all that and all that. If you want to, that's, that's, that's not the half of what it's about. Now let's talk about Alistair Crowley. And I, I looked up his um thing. Um, um this because uh, I state that those those entities will make you eat those potions and lotions and motions like that. And you're talking about a whole different set of stuff where you're talking about that. These evil demonic forces that the Scorpio is innately uh, uh, um um connected to at the subconscious level because of their placements. And I stated how Mars working Venus and Scorpio. Now, it is like, uh, so those posts and motions, 
if they did work, it, 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 the entities can sometimes want you to pay up. It can want to bounce the scales on its own, and it 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 did like it'll be a lot more forceful than what you're posting most in lotions did or whatever you were doing or trying to do. That's what I'm getting right now. And I started talking about that two weeks ago. Now, as the crawler was a sun in Libra, now he's a Libra sun sign. I knew nothing about him. He called himself, he wanted to be called the beast. Okay. So he wanted to be called the beast. So he, and he, so he wanted people to call him the beast. And he had a church of Satan. So he started he had a he started church. Okay. So Alistair Crowley at born Edward Alexander Crowley, October 12th, 1875, was an English occultist. He was a ceremonial magician. So he had a church and he used to do um magic, ceremonial magic. Okay. He was a poet and a painter and a novelist and a mountaineer. He was responsible for the, for founding the religion and philosophy of the Lima. I've never heard of it. In which role he identified himself as the prophet and trusted with guiding humanity into the Aeon of Horus in the early 20th century. Born to a wealthy Plymouth Brethren family, Crowley rejected this faith to pursue Western esotericism, poetry, and mountaineering. In, 20, in 2002, a BBC poll ranked him as the 73rd greatest Briton of all time. L now, let me tell you all about following people. Don't follow people spiritually unless they have a strong, unless they told you about a strong moral compass that they have and that they believe in something greater than them that make sure that moral compass is followed. That they believe in karma, they believe in the balance of the scale, they believe in good and evil, they believe in right and wrong. If you come across people that don't, and they don't, they believe that they should just be independent, which there's independence in all of that also. If they don't believe it, uh, talk about anything higher than them that is greater than them other than their own damn mind, you need to be careful what you're following. Because they can have an alter, alter ego. Like that, that they that they're the end all and be all. It starts with them and ends with them. They have nothing to answer to but that. And that's when they'll be telling you to call them the fucking beast, or they'll be telling because they don't feel that there's anything above them that puts them in line, like that. Other than something may be evil or nothing, like that. You know. Is those types of things. That's what I'm getting right now. Now, so he wanted to be called the beast. He was a son in Libra. His moon was in Pisces. So he's obviously, he was obviously connected with the moon in Pisces. Mercury was in Scorpio. So his Mercury was in Scorpio. My Mercury is in Scorpio also. So he was receiving, that's the messages from the ethers. Mercury is a messenger. So he was receiving communication from other realms from the darker realms may have been um, the Mercury is the intellect is the communication so he was receiving messages from the scorpionic energy okay moon and Pisces being able to pick it up on it effortlessly moon Pisces is the most sensitive of the water signs Cancer is the most emotional. Scorpio is the most deep. Okay. Now, so he was Mercury communication from the other realms. Mercury is your communication with others around you also regarding what he was picking up on. So his message from the other realms, when he told y'all to call him the beast, his message from the other realms was the beast was speaking exactly to you all. So he had connected energetically to the to the scorpionic energy that is the beast, the head of the beast. And when he told y'all to when he said fix him a church, okay, that was the beast, the scorpionic energy, want the church fixed or whatever, built or how I don't know how the hell they did it. This is what I'm picking up on the message right now. 
um, channeling message about him. So he was connected like that. Now, so the the bees, the scorpionic energy, told him to build a church. The bees told him to tell them at the church to call as to call the bees. Okay. So, okay, that's what that connection was. He had Venus and Libra, and he was a Libra. Libra is false judgment. But for spiritual, I don't know what you all Google. I'm, I'm getting what I know energetically. That just comes to me specifically. Libra is false judgment, spiritually. It bears false witness, those damn demonic scales. I talked about those with scales two weeks ago. Now, okay. His Mars was in Capricorn. Okay. So he incarnated to take um, this is to lead to lead the church of Satan. Capricorn is the bowels. His Mars in Capricorn. My North Node is in Capricorn. And my moon. Okay. So he incarnated. Mars is your actions. I have my Mars in Scorpio. So he didn't have the power to um so he was connected to the, the, the beast, but he didn't have the to take the actions of the beast because Mars was in Capricorn. But he was able to communicate directly and the beast manifest through him through communication and taking actions, Capricorn balls, tenth house, to be to lead. So the beast was leading. Yeah, so it was really happening. But through the human, Alistair Crowley, the Libra, the beast wasn't taking any actions, but, but they were having... So the, this that's why they were having ceremonial magicians. Ceremonial magicians, that means a group of people to do magic stuff. Because Alistair didn't have the Mars and Scorpio to be able to do the stuff, the dark stuff that to, to do that like that. The action is that he didn't have that, but he had the Mercury Scorpio was communicating with the bees. That's what it was. He had Jupiter in Scorpio. Expansion. Okay. It was so he had a lot of hidden information. He had Saturn in Aquarius. My Saturn is in Gemini. He had Saturn in Aquarius. But retrograde. Uh, more to the incarnations. Saturn was restricting this new age, what he was trying to do. That's why he didn't have the, thank God he didn't have the Mars in Scorpio too. And, and how he was connected to the energies. Now, Saturn restricts. Saturn works well with Uranus. Those are rulers. Saturn and Aquarius. Aquarius wouldn't like Saturn's energy. Just like people don't like Saturn. They're more into the Aquarius energy because they think it's about humanitarianship and being good. Okay, that could be the guise of what is beneath the surface. Or that could be the truth. It depends on the person and what we see like that. Saturn is the ruler. Is a ruler. So it had Aquarius under thumb. Restricted. Confined, blocked, um, not be able to expand above uh, uh, and start to be good because it didn't have Mars and Scorpio either. Being able to take the action like that of the action that the beast would have wanted funneled here into the third dimension state of consciousness. That's why they were having a ceremonial. Could have, um, Alistair didn't have the power 
And it's sounding with restricting that new age of as it relates to this. Is what it is. Uranus was in Leo. Was restricting Aquarius. Aquarius is the new age. Uranus in Leo. 19 degrees. So, Uranus does bring in a new. His was in Leo. He wanted a recognition for it. Uranus rules the opposite side of Aquarius. Public recognition. Uranus. Is, is Neptune was in Taurus. Pluto was in Taurus also. His North Node was in Aries. Was trying to create some type of new beginning. His Chiron was in Aries. His MC was in Aries trying to create some type of new beginning. New world, a new um new world. Plan to create some type of new world. New beginning. Aries, the pioneer, the new beginning. Taking humanity where humanity hasn't gone. Saturn stopped it. Saturn in Aquarius. Sun and Libra. False judgment. False witness. Demonic scales. He said he was a prophet. He was okay, like that. Now, is but for a darker energy, and they were having ceremonial, he was a ceremonial magician because he didn't have the power to take action. That would have been a Mars and Scorpio, but he was getting the communication. He didn't have the power to take the action because Saturn overruled the Aquarius part, the New Age part. That aspect of new age. And his sun sign was in Libra. But when we we go down here, we look at his um he doesn't have the um he doesn't have Lucifer's rectangle. Lucifer's rectangle is in two earth and two water. He has his son in Libra is a part of his rectangle, his Uranus being in Leo, and there's something with his Uranus being in his Uranus being in Leo. And then he has his Saturn in Aquarius, and his MC in Aries, and his Chiron in Aries, and his Venus in Libra. Was his rectangle. He had three yards. He had one with Leo, Capricorn, and Pisces. Libra, Taurus, and Pisces. Pisces, Leo, Libra, and Libra. So, and he had a grand square is the most important thing. He had a grand square. He 
Yeah, and in the grand square is what kind of restricted him also. Because his grand square starts with Saturn and Aquarius. And Saturn grabs Aquarius back by the collar. Okay. And that Mercury and Scorpio is a part of his grand square next. That communication. And then that Uranus and Leo. There's something with the Uranus and Leo that I'm not able to pick up on. And that Pluto and Taurus. Taurus is how we're seen in the spirit realm. In our earthly realm, bit of, 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 of reflection of that. That grand square is what restricted him also, which is good. He he had the rectangle. He's a, he's a huge rectangle. Okay, let's see. Some of you, um, rectangles usually consist of four, like mine is Sagittarius, Leo, Aries, Le is Sagittarius, Libra, Aries, Gemini. Okay. His six Libra, L um, Leo, Aquarius, Aries, he had on the MC, Chiron, and Venus, Libra, okay. He had on the MC and Chiron. Okay. I have my Chiron and Aries also, but it's not a part of my um, it's not a part of my mystic rectangle. Saturn and Gemini is. My MC and Aries is, and my Uranus and Libra, and my Sun, obviously. Now, so he had a sixth place. But he did not have the um other. So so what that means is that. He he didn't he doesn't have the Lucifer's rectangle. So they need to stop associating him with it. I don't know why I got him, him associated with it. I feel that they was maybe the astrologer was talking about <clears throat> the houses. No, it couldn't have been. Let's see. Let's see here. So I don't think that they need to associate him. With Lucifer's rectangle, even though he was connected in, in that way. Okay, so let's see. And it's, it's rare. It's rare, um, this rectangle here. It's rare. Tars, Virgo. Pisces, Scorpio. Okay. He didn't have it. And, and he didn't have the, he wasn't able to do the, like, he was connected to the, the, to the, um, to the beast, beast. To the worst of the worst of the Scorpionic energy. Because remember, in, in all energetic bodies, we have that lower energy and the higher energy. Just like with the biblical God and Christian, he was good, but he also was sending storms and, and fire. Okay, that's the good and the negative. Okay, we had that also in the spirituality. So, and I talked about the Scorpionic energy for the positive last week. So, but I also started talking about, cause I know and I can feel, I'm not pie in the sky when I'm talking spiritual and, and rainbows and gumdrops. Those people are not spiritual. Those just housewives that want to be special so they get stones and start meditating and all of that. Because they want to be looked at as they're doing something different. Okay. Now is, and that they're not a part of the norm or what they call old-fashioned. Now, so is, 
So he was associated with the beast, 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 like that. And receiving a message, that's Mercury and Scorpio, Pisces, Moon, very sensitive to most sensitive of the three. Um, the moon, moon comes in, not because of cancer. The moon, moon comes in because it's just darkness. It's the moon, moon. It's evil and darkness is the moon, moon. Now, even though the fourth house was like that, is an occult house, but it's because of the moon, moon. Okay, so it would be he didn't he didn't have the he had the Mars in Capricorn, so he was incarnated to the Mars is the action to be the leader is Capricorn of this church of Satan. So your, your chart shows exactly what you're supposed to be doing. Everybody has an astrological chart now. So he was doing it, but he didn't have the power. To, to take the action because Mars was in Capricorn. His incarnation was about setting up and being a leader of the church. So they will have ceremonial magicians. So he would connect the other, he had to connect the other people that are magicians. That were a part of the church of Satan. In order for them to create a type of power. Is what it was. But it was stopped. Because Saturn was in his, in his Aquarius at 19 degrees. He was in Aquarius at 31 degrees. So in Saturn is about fairness. Karma, justice, balance. Order. And that you have somebody else too greater than you when you go outside those bounds. That's what Saturn is about. So now, it would be... Um, it, that's why it didn't... Well, whatever didn't happen. That's why it was limited. So, somebody... Has somebody has the has Lucifer's rectangle, but he didn't have it. And this one states like a mystic rectangle, Lucifer's rectangle is formed either by two trines or two opposition aspects that conjoin with two sets by aspects. Unlike a mystic rectangle, Lucifer's rectangle must have entity composing its planets, asteroids, or points located only in the following four signs, Pisces, Taurus, Virgo, and Scorpio. Additionally, a Lucifer's rectangle must be only in earth and water elements. Okay, so somebody has that. Now, and, and they will have Lucifer's rectangle. The extent of their power will be because where their Mars is. It'll be extent where their Mercury is also. That's the communication. The Mars will be their actions. Or energies that can work through them. Their moon sign will be important. And the, and the limitations on their ability to do whatever regarding the incarnation will be where the Saturn is in their chart. And as it relates to um, humans, the world at large, society, like that. Is what I'm getting. So 
until Saturn stopped this. With his grand square, Saturn stopped it. Saturn in Aquarius, Mercury in Scorpio. Uranus it, it may put limitations on it. It was limited. Pluto and Taurus. And then he, did, he didn't have the Mars in the Scorpio. He had in the Capricorn. He was able to take action, Mars, but only in being a leader. With his ceremonial magician stuff, what I'm getting here energetically right now is that whoever he was choosing to be in the ceremonial magician, because he didn't have the Mars in Scorpio, um... Whoever he was, uh, these people, they didn't have enough energy. They didn't, so, because they had to get together and do it. It's like how we see naked people, used, naked women used to be out there doing moon magic in a group. Because it takes a lot of them because they don't have the power by themselves. Okay, like that. So that's what ceremonial magicians, people with it, ceremonial magicians do that. Because Mars tells your power. So that's what he was doing. So they were doing rituals. I don't believe in rituals. So they were doing potions and lotions and motions. And ceremonial magician stuff is what they were doing. Because the energy wasn't in him. His Mars was his energy. His energy was to um, be the leader of the church. Capricorn leader. Mars and Capricorn. And his Saturn was in Aquarius. Aquarius is the new age. Is um, um, like, and, but Saturn is there. And Aquarius doesn't like Saturn. Because Saturn is, is like your daddy. Like that. Okay. You know, is those types of things. That tells you what you can't do. It restricts you. Puts blockage, limitations. You're not free. You're not independent. You have somebody to answer to. And Saturn is about justice, karma, balance, right and wrong, karmic scales, and all of that. So that's what it was. Now, somebody, now which one of you demons out there have the the the, the Lucifer's rectangle in your chart? And and what and I hope you what's your Mars, what's your Mars in? Like that. And what's your your Mercury in? What's your moon sign in? And, and where's your Saturn? Like that. Where's your Aquarius at? And where are your yachts? So I can see what purpose you have here on Earth. Like that is what I'm getting. Now, those of you that want to be a part of my secret society, make sure that you have, and I'm going to say it once again. Make sure you have Uranus, not Aquarius, promptly located in the first, fourth, seventh, or tenth house. Or you have it configured with the sun, moon, or Mercury. This indicates the person has passed the test of Saturn. Like that. That's based on astrology. Now, that's based on spiritual astrology. We're talking about Saturn and all that. That means you know right from wrong, justice, karma, like that. Um, fairness. It's like that. Now, and, and if you have yachts, because you have a very special purpose, but yachts are very rare. And if you had a misted rectangle like that, if you had Lucifer's rectangle, despite what your chart says, if you had Lucifer's rectangle, I can look at your chart and know what, you, what the rest of your chart says, how you'll be, what you incarnate to do and all that and what, what you're here for and, and, and that, like that, you know, is what I'm getting witness. Okay, everyone, until next time, thanks for listening. Bye.